Good morning, this is David Rizzo with Rogers Gardens and today we're doing January in the Garden and Happy New Year's guys. It's it's a great time of year. We, we turn over the new leaves. So I really love this time of year because we're really going into the gardening time of year. And so we're getting ready for our gardens. And the one thing too, I'll, I'll talk a little bit, the weather. So the, the, the good thing about the weather this year is we're getting a lot of rain. Rain is important for plants to establish. We're getting the, the, the longer rainstorms like this that come in and really give you about a half an inch or quarter inch. It's really good because that's important for a lot of the older plants, older trees, older fruit trees, because they get that groundwater, it soaks in. Very important and hopefully it might pull us out of the drought. Another thing that's really gonna be good this year is we've had a cold year. So a lot of our fruit trees are getting the chill that they need. And a lot of people will ask, what, what are chill requirements? How do we measure them? What are they? So chill requirements are the total number of hours in the winter that's 45 degrees or under. Sometimes we might, we might get about 150 around in there. We usually don't get high. This year we're already at two. Some areas might be even closer to 253. That's what a lot of the low chill varieties of fruit trees need. They need that amount of chill to come out in spring and bloom and, and really get going. So if they don't get enough chill like apricots, if they don't get enough chill, you won't get a lot of setting and you won't get a lot of flowering. So that's important. So let me take off my sunglasses. It's getting sort of dark so I can see you guys better and you can see me. Uh, so um, right now with the vegetables, we're still doing a lot of vegetables. So I'm still um, doing all the, the broccoli, um, the, the uh, collard greens, let me pull them up. So this one is uh, Vates collard greens, that's a good one. Um, your broccoli destiny, when they crowd them like this, definitely separate them, don't leave them like that. Um, you even have your asparagus brock. Asparagus brock is more of like um, your um, broccoli raw, you know, so asparagus brocks are good. Your cabbage, so one thing I always will tell people this time of year is, you can put in a second uh, winter vegetable garden. So right now, you, if you didn't plant, or if your, your, your stuff is done or it's finished by now, plant more. And another thing too, I just want to tell with broccoli, when you cut that central head, just go right below the head and fertilize it with an organic fertilizer like the down to earth, let me grab it. I use this a lot on my vegetables. So the down to earth, um, all purpose, this is a good one for the broccoli and the cauliflower, but the minute you cut that head, fertilize it, put the fertilizer down before it rains so that, that this fertilizer can really leach in. So that's important too. But the reason why I feed um, with the broccoli is I'm gonna have florets that are gonna come out of the side shoot. So when you have the trunk and you have the branch, you're gonna get little florets out of there. And if you have say six or eight plants, you'll get so many florets every week. You just keep cutting those little side. There are many little little heads that come out of the sides of the branches. So definitely harvest your uh, florets on your broccoli. Um, and then moving on with the veggies, so chard. Oh, I do all the chard right now. Bright Lights is one of my favorites. So Swiss chard, definitely. Um, some of the, all the, the greens. So like your Napa cabbage I'm putting in right now your lettuce, um, your romaine. I, this is one of my favorite. I love gourmet mixed uh, leaf lettuces. So this has raw oak leaf in it, red seeded Simpsons. I love the mixes. You can still go strong with all your arugula. Arugula likes the colder weather. It doesn't bolt right now. So plant your arugula, um, your bok choy, all of your, your kale. And um, this has a lot of um, mustard greens in here. I'll, sh I'll pull this one out. And these are really good, actually, like the red streaks. These mustard greens are really good. They're not too spicy. And then you got some of the Asian greens like Mizuna. This is a really good cabbage, or not cabbage, kale called Red Russian Kale. So that's a good one. You don't see it in the markets because it doesn't ship that well, but oh, that's a good one. And then I didn't bring up the regular um, Italian kale, but you can do the Italian kale right now. Um, fava beans fava beans get big they'll get four to six feet tall so put them in the back of the garden but favas are really good favas are actually legumes and even when you harvest the um the pods off them when you go to cut them back you can work the roots into the soil because they will fix nitrogen because they're legumes so that's good and all your onions 
this is the time of year I don't, one of the things I always stress is with onions. I don't buy onion sets. Onion sets never bulb up. But what I like to do is I like to get the plants and separate them. So if you get a bunch of little onion plants, separate them, put them about, a, about six inches apart, about a foot apart in each row, and always put them in full sun. I brought some leeks up right now. So this is Bulgarian giant. Leeks are the same thing too. What I'll do is I will separate them. The way I separate them, usually if, if they're in soil, I take them out of the container and I wash them with water and I gently pull them apart. I get my bed ready with my compost and my amendments. I make a hole in my pencil um, and then I plant. You don't want to go too deep with them. Another thing that you could do, let me grab this tool here. This is called a dibber or dibble. And so you can make a little tiny hole. This is really um, more for planting bulbs. I plant my garlic with it, um, shallots with it. Uh, you don't have to go really deep, but you can make a little hole with the dibble, and that way you get some good straight rows when you're planting your leeks and your onions. And the one thing that you really got to watch for when you're buying onions, go for short day varieties or intermediates, because we don't, since we're so south, we don't get, our, our days coming out of spring aren't as long as north. So don't go for any of those long day onions because they won't bulb up down here. Like if you try some of the Walla Wallas and some of the other ones, the northern types, they just won't get enough sun early in spring. So we're doing Granex and Texas Granule and Texas Super Sweet. One of my favorites though, I love candy. If I can find um, the onion, which is a sweet onion called candy, that is one of my favorites. It's an intermediate variety and I always do good, uh, good luck with candy. So that's important. So plant your onions, plant, but buy plants. If you like to do seeds, you know, if you wanted to do onions from uh, seeds, you should have started in September. So do your plants. So let me put this back. And then I'm going to, I'm going to get, let me just come down here and I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can seed. And um, peas, peas are, are good to plant right now. So we're getting, these are still the edible peas. So these are the sugar snaps. Now, I don't always have to buy plants. I can do the seeds. I can do, like I brought some up. The sugar magnolia, that's a really good one. That's the one that gets more of a purple lavender shell, like seed pod, which is really good. It's more of like a shelling type. You can actually use them for eating too. I like this, the Super Daddy sugar snap peas. There's another one called Oregon 2 snow pea that I like. Um, one of the things when you're putting peas on a trellis, always make sure that trellis is in full sun. And what I do is I like to get the, um, the netting. This is just regular regular netting, trellis netting. This is a seven by 14 piece. I usually take a bamboo stake about six feet apart, eight feet apart, stretch it, zip tie it, and then I plant them at the bottom because peas can't climb a regular trellis because it's too thick. These little, like the netting is really fine. So these little tendrils of you see are so small that they can't wrap around anything larger than a pencil. So they need a really net, like really light netting. So this is really good, but I love the seven by 14 because I can cut it in half and then I'll use some now. And then when we get, when we start doing cucumbers in April, I'll save the netting for beans and cucumbers in the summer. Okay. And so let's keep on going with seeds. So peas, yes. Um, and then again, with all the greens, I'll even do kale right now. Chef's choice, uh, lettuce, kale I'll do right now. One of my favorite seed companies. I love this seed company, Southern Exposure Seeds. And um, where are they out of? They're out of, um, where are they are? They're out of uh, Mineral, uh, Virginia. This is such a good seed company. The quality of their germination is really good. So this is cabbage from them, uh, carrots from them. I'll even do some herbs and I'll go more into herbs, but I, the garlic tribes I'll plant right now from seed. Um, one of my favorite radishes. I love these French breakfast radishes. They're so sweet, so love those. Let's see if I got any other, other other ones. Um, the Easter, the Easter um, blend. These are really good radishes. Now your little your little cherry bells are spicy radishes. So, so if you like the spicy, and they're quick, you German, you direct sow them in the ground. Don't plant them deep. Do little rows, maybe a quarter inch deep. The rain's gonna water them in good, and just watch them. And one thing I always do, another thing that I I'll, I'll recommend this time of year since we're getting so much rain. Watch the snails and slugs. If you have a problem, I always use Sluggo. Now Sluggo is actually, 
safe to use around animals because this is an iron phosphate. This is not a methaldehyde based slug bait. So iron phosphate. So definitely if you're if you're doing a lot of seedlings and even with your lettuces and with your peas, you might have to put sluggo down if you have a snail or slug problem. And that will take take care of it. Um, going back with seeds, so what else we got in here? So let me go through with, oh yeah, I still do broccoli even though I'm late. I still plant broccoli from seeds if I can't find it, but try to get the bigger head broccoli too. Um, spinach, love you spinach right now. You got Matador is a good one. Lavina is a good one. These are not, I don't like the Savoy or the crinkled leaf um, spinach because it's tough. Do the, because you can cut these as a baby, baby lettuce or baby greens. You can even mix this with your lettuce too. Let me see if I got, let me see if I brought, I, maybe I didn't grab it. No, I don't think I grabbed it, but oh yeah, I did right here. Um, one of my favorite mixes, like I was showing you, gourmet baby greens. I could take and put a little bit of spinach in there. I could even make, put some arugula in here if I want. So that's good to plant right now. And then I grabbed more carrots. So all the carrots. Romance, I got short stuff, so do them by seeds. And um, another thing with carrots, radishes, and beets, don't buy the transplants, buy the seeds. And so I brought a couple of my favorite varieties of beets, um, Chioga, which is Italian heirloom, the candy stripe. I like the Detroit Red, there's Merlin, there's Golden Beets, all of them are really, really good. So I like those. Um, what else do we have in the vegetables? I think that's it for the seeds. And one of the things I was going to show, and I usually don't show this, um, during the winter time, especially when the nights are cold, I like to look through seed catalogs. I get all my seed catalogs and I can look at them when I'm watching the hockey game. So one of my favorite things to do is seed savers exchange, territorial seeds. So I like to look through the seed catalogs and see what's, what's new and what's coming out for the new year. So that's it for the vegetables, but like I said, go in there, plant, get going on it because you can get them in be before a rain and that's really gonna water them in good. So that's with the vegetables. Um, I'm gonna take some of this down though. Here, let's move some of this. I'm gonna bring the herbs over, okay? So let's just bear with me for a second. I wanna, I'm gonna bring the herbs over because the herbs this time of year, you're gonna be going after more of your perennial herbs. So that's the only thing you, that you're gonna be planting. Just gonna move this one in here. So planting herbs right now. Always your perennial herbs. So um, you're, it's too cold to do basil and dill, but now I'm doing thyme, parsley, oregano, sage, all of them. So this is my favorite oregano, Mexican oregano. I love that. I put this on pizzas. So again, I always pinch off a little bit with my thumb. I hold the stem and I shred the leaf and I put that fresh on my pizzas, love that. Um, your thyme, so your variegated thyme, which is a lemon thyme is good. You can put that in drinks, more lemon thyme. Um, you get into French thyme. French and English thyme are your cooking thymes, so they're good to plant right now. Uh, you can do French sorrel too. So, um, French sorrel is really good. Um, your parsleys, your Italian flat leaf, your curly leaf, put them in right now oh, what do you got right here you got oh this is a hackery turnip these are really good these are more of the vegetables but this is a really good turnip it's called a salad turnip from japan so hackery is that's a good veggie um you can do your mints right now mints are going to slow down right now this time of year i just don't put them in the ground because they'll spread all over the place i like to keep them in containers so put them in a nice little terracotta pot chamomile I'll plant right now. This is the same thing you'd harvest for the tea, the flowers you'd harvest for the tea in the, in the spring and summer. You got peppermint. Peppermint's good, but again, don't put mint in the ground. Put it in containers. Um, you got you got winter savory, like the lemon savories are good right now. Um, Lovage is really good right now. Um, and, and another one too, though, is cilantro. Cilantro really likes it growing in the winter time and you could do the seeds like leisure and santos and, and calopsis and all of them but cilantro loves it when it's cooler another trick i want to show you and i'm going to make a mess jen <laughs> but i always will take let's see can i do you want me to hold something yeah you want to hold it just hold it up hold it i want to show you how you trim it so if you hold it my lovely um assistant jen jennifer from the garden 
rooms. And so what I do is I just cut straight across. And that's your that's your cilantro. Now I will probably cut some of the stems off there, but that's the cilantro. But the one thing that I cut it a little higher, if you can see, I don't want to cut it too low because I want it to come back. This has a crown. So by cutting like that, I can do that with a lettuce too. But this is how I cut fresh cilantro. And then use it and keep on cutting it and you'll get guys sometimes out of cilantro i might get about you know four to four to six cuts out of it before it goes dormant and if you guys want to know the pruners i always use these are felco 310s we sell them um i love the felco brand because they're made really well one of my favorite pruners and i forgot to grab it felco number twos that's my favorite i think i'm using sevens right now to prune roses but Felco number twos are my favorite. Um, and then there's color packs of cilantro, but definitely put in your cilantro right now and keep cutting it. Usually I'll get, I'll keep mine growing until about March or April. And it, it starts getting too hot in a bolt. So that's one thing, trick with cilantro, everybody says I don't have good luck with it. Well, cilantro doesn't like the heat. It's just like arugula. Arugula is the same way. Arugula hates hot weather. But when it's cool like this, you can harvest arugula all winter long. So that's with with everything, with the herbs and with the veggies. And so moving on, um, let's take the herbs down. And I'm going to talk a little bit about flowers right now. And then we'll go into sweet peas and we'll keep on going. Let me set this down. Okay, let me move this. Okay, now with flowers. So you can still plant all your annual winter. I don't want to knock this off. Um, you can still plant all your winter um, annuals, like your violas, your pansies, snapdragons, all that stuff. Keep going with that. But this time of year, I always tell people, start planting your biennials. So you don't want to wait too long because we're already in January. Sometimes I like to go even de December. But if you, didn't, you don't have your foxgloves in, these are called foxy mix. Put your biennials in. I don't, we were out of... Uh, delphiniums but again put them in with the rains and get them going because they're going to grow all the way through the rest of winter and spring they'll start blooming so even the hollyhocks not your hollyhocks right now this one is a mix so this is just a single mix put in the hollyhocks um i'll go through and all your um your champagne bubbles uh, poppies I plant them right now because they're going to bloom through spring. Another thing, where did I, I don't know what I did with them. Um, I don't think I brought them up, but, oh, they're on the cart right there. Okay, so another thing to start planting right now that will bloom into spring are your English, um, your, well, your primrose, your English primrose. You have your fairy primrose, your English primrose, all of them. Put them in right now because they will go, and a lot of people think they're mostly shade. Primrose can handle sun on the coast. We always used to plant these under our roses, so they'll take sun. Now, if you're in a hotter area where your spring might heat up um, quicker than us, then you might put them in a little shade, but if you put them in too much um, shade, they're just gonna rot out. So yeah, you can see the flowers are starting to pop. So in the next two, three weeks, watch for all these English primrose and watch for some of the anemones, like the Mona Lisa anemones. And then I'll, we'll get ranunculus and a lot of stuff as we get closer into the into the winter time. Okay, and so let's go with that. Okay, so um, next thing I want to talk about is now's the time to plant your natives. So um, a lot of your California natives, like your cenotes, like your buckwheat, like your um, your matilla poppies, you plant them in winter because they establish with coinciding with the winter rains, and so. And with planting them, um, you don't, you want to mix them up. Sometimes I'll use like a decomposed granite, I'll use cactus mix, I'll use pumice. But the main thing is they are actively growing winter into spring and a lot of them go to summer dormant. So don't overwater them in summer. So I brought a couple of them up, some of my favorites that I like. Um, I'm just going to set them behind the vegetables. I'm not going to really move the veggies. Um, but one of my favorites, I love the salvias. So Cleveland sage, love this plant. It can get big. There's a lot of variations that will stay small, like Pozo Blue and Allen Chickering and all of those. Um, and then your white sage, your Salvia Apianas, love these. Um, like the Arctostaphyluses, but see if they get too much water. Like see this is rotting out. So generally, even when I put them in right now, I won't really give them a lot of supplemental water because the rainwater will take it 
take um, really establish them. So don't overwater them. Did I bring any more up? No, but there's ceanothus, there's sugarberries, there's um, trichostemia, woolly blue curls. There's a bunch of them. So you can always come in and talk to us. Um, I've grown I've grown quite a number of natives because one of my friends um, used to work for Native Sons, one of my favorite growers. So they're really cool. So look at some of their website and see what variety that. Now it's time to plant your natives. So that uh, and fertilizing them, not too much. I usually might put a tiny bit of compost down, but I don't want to keep it too wet. So that's important for California natives. You plant them right now, coinciding with the winter rains. Don't over or over fertilize them. Don't overfeed them. Don't overwater them in the summer. Okay. And so that's for natives. Now, another thing that you want to plant right now, you don't want to wait, are your flowering sweet peas. So all these sweet peas. So we just got a shipment of 160 flats. So come in and get them. You got a really good white variety, Mary Priestley. That's a good one. You got um, Jacqueline Ann, which is a deep lavender. I always bring up some of my favorites. And John Gray, salmon with what, like a little bit of salmony pink white uh well more like pink edges and sort of white but one of my let's see if i can find it i'm gonna because there's one that i love that's called blue wonder that's sally meadland sally meadland is a magenta pink that's a good one let's see if we got some uh, we're getting down blue wonder oh this is one of my favorites it's sort of more of like a medium blue sky blue love the color of that flower and uh, one thing to understand with sweet peas the ones that we bring in I know a lot of people ask a lot, like, why are they more fragrant? Why are they better than other people's sweet peas? Well, one of the one of the people that used to work here named Steve Hampson, he found a hybridizer in England, and, and they bring them in from England, and they're Spencer types, so long stem fragrance. So that's one thing. If you watch on um, our YouTube channel on growing sweet peas with Steve Hampson, a lot of good information on them, but there a lot of them are Spencer types, long stem and um, fragrance. So another one, one of my favorites is uh, Sir Jimmy Shand Lilac with a white edge to it, really good one. You got um, Sally Madeline. You got um, Anniversary, which is a good one. The main thing with sweet peas, uh, with flower and sweet peas, they're just like growing edible sweet peas, but you find a trellis, put it in a sunny location, they get six to eight hours of sun, and again, tie your trellis netting on here this one's a 7 by 14 and so tie the netting on there because again these have such small tendrils that they're not going to climb around metal that's that's thick they're going to need a little bit of netting to grab on with their tendrils and climb up and they'll they'll climb about four to six feet tall they'll grow the rest of this winter to spring but the minute we go longer in the days that's when they'll start blooming. So that's with this sweet peas. Put them in right now. Don't wait. Um, this is a this is a good time of year, and I don't I don't really have a lot to show to prune. But this is when you prune your roses and your fruit trees. And so I'm gonna I brought in like I'm actually gonna put it on the table. I brought in a um, a floribunda. So I brought an iceberg up. So even when I, I'm gonna put this to the side. So when I'm pruning, I'm just gonna use my regular clippers. So when I'm pruning, I'm not pruning them that hard. I will take a lot of flowers off, but generally with pruning hybrid teas, floribundas, and climbing roses. So even hybrid teas and floribundas, I'll cut them down to about half. I won't go more than that. If you cut them under that and they're older, they won't come back strong. So what I like to do, and I'm not wearing gloves, I should be wearing gloves, I like to go through and, and pull the leaves down and strip all these leaves off. Like see if I can, if I can get on these outward ones, I'll, uh, I'm gonna trim that one. But again, I'm gonna pull them down. I'm gonna grab that, that leaf. And the reason why I'm stripping all the leaves off this, I don't want them to hold on to any fungal problems. So I'm getting rid of these leaves because they might hold black smot, rust, and those are the two bigger funguses that you're going to fight. Like even with this, with this flower, I'm cutting these off. These have, I don't know if you can see it on here. I'll turn it around. See the pink, the pink spots on the back of this? This is botrytis. So I'm going to get rid of these flowers. And even I hate to do it on a, on a blooming plant. But again, don't take them down too far. Strip all the leaves. Then once I get all the leaves stripped out on it, and I don't have time to really show you, but 
once I get them all stripped out and get them all laced out and, and stripped out, I will take off sort of, you can't really see it, but sometimes I will cut interior and open up the plant a little bit. Um, bush varieties, I don't, I just like light trim them. Hybrid teas, I will cut on a 45 degree angle. I will take some out of the middle. I always want to open up the middle a little bit so it's not so overcrowded. You'll have less fungal problems in summer, so that's important. But once I get them all trimmed and stripped and laced out, this is when I come back with my sprays. And so let me, I got such a jungle of stuff. So my two favorite sprays, let me take this iceberg down. And so my, my two favorite sprays, I like liquid cop. That's a copper spray, very good dormancy spray. So I use that on fruit trees, I use that on roses. It, I even will spray it on the ground. Um, if you have white trim, white picket fence, white white house, don't use this because this could lightly dye anything white a light blue. So, but favorite if you don't have white color paint, if you do, just use a sulfur spray. Sulfur is another good dormancy. This is just rose three in one. You can even use that. So that's the copper. And my favorite way of using it, I'm just going to show you really quick. I like pump sprayers. I like pump sprayers. So these are just, this is just a little two gallon pump sprayer. And so I'll put about an ounce to two ounces in this little thing. I'll fill it with water. You put that on tight and it has a little latch and you just, it's compressed air. So then you lock it and then you're just going to spray. So I'll spray all the canes, I'll, I'll spray the ground, but I like this because I can really get in all the little nooks and crannies along the cane, crane, um, canes and ground. So favorite thing, this is a little, um, this is by Flowmaster, Hudson, Solo makes them. So I like the pump sprayers more because they go slower and I can really get a good application of um, the amount of spray on there. So. That's with the spray and the roses. And so, yeah, if you have any questions about pruning roses, come and see me. Um, about pruning fruit trees, let's see if I can get this 15 gallon. Oh gosh, I got too much stuff on the table. Here, let me move some of, I'm making a mess. It's like, I'm always pretty good about making a mess, but I always will clean up afterward. Let me move this. So, this is an apple tree. So apple tree, I'm gonna move this to the side right here. Let me, apple tree is pretty thinned out. Um, one thing I don't like to do that you can see on this branch, always let your fruit trees go up and out. Don't shape them. Like see how this has nice growth on it. Now, if you have any water sprouts that are coming up through the middle, you take those out. Anything that's going to clog up the middle, you thin out. So mainly when you're pruning fruit trees, and this holds with citrus too, and this, this holds with apples, peaches, plums, nectarines, um, and apricots. Don't don't trim them back and shape them. You'll cut all the growth off. Most all of these fruit off of their new growth that was produced last year. So lace them. Watch for suckers. If you see suckers coming from the ground, don't trim them. Um, water sprouts will go straight up. But don't head them back because then you'll get these branches like, like this one that will go straight up. And one thing with apples, see these spurs? They produce off of spurring branches. So don't. I've seen the I've seen customers like the gardeners will take all the spurs off. See these little spurs? These are little short producing pr uh, fruit branches that will produce fruit right on them. So don't touch the spurs. And again, I'll go through and I'll thin them out. Take the suckers off the roots. Take the water sprouts off the off the interior of the plant and um, spray them with a the dormancy spray. Another thing that I will tell you before I, I wrap it up. Um, the one thing is, since we're getting a lot of rain, spray now with your with your copper or your sulfur. I might spray again in two to three weeks. Usually I don't, usually I only spray once, but we're gonna get a lot more rain and we're gonna get a lot more fungal stuff active because our rains. And so, um, but again, spray now after they're done. And then another thing with apple trees and with peaches, don't strip the leaves off, let them, let them uh, drop on their own. And um, so I think that covers it for today. Another way, one more thing that I will talk about that I do a lot. Oh, another thing before I leave to you. Um, let me take the apple off the, the counter. Let me just put them back over here. Um, another thing that I didn't touch on that I definitely do this time of year is plant your wildflower seeds. Now is the time to do it. Get them in before rain. 
You can put a little silica sand in there because when it agitates the seeds and the rains, it helps open up the seeds more and they germinate better. So this one is Endless Bouquets Cut Flower Blend. So this probably has, um, looks like calendulas and marigolds and sunflowers in there and coneflowers. So that's a good one. But And even your native ones too. All your California native wallflowers. We're getting some good seed mixes from the true light. So that's another one to check out next time you come in. But um, one thing I was going to touch on before we leave is I'm notorious for putting down a fertilizer before it rains. So your compost tea, if you collect rainwater, I do in five gallon buckets and trash cans. I make tea out of water in my garden, but I love to put down Malibu compost and worm castings before rain because that will leach in and the rains really help break things down. So that's wrapping it up for today. So any questions you can ask me now and thank you for joining me. But any questions, now it's question and answer time. All right, we have like three questions. Okay. One of them is, is, am I too late for planting the seeds of cauliflower? Um, she's asking, am I too late for uh, planting cauliflower seeds? It's, well, I, yeah, because see, cauliflower, when you grow them from seeds, you need about six to eight weeks to be sizable to plant. We, in six to eight weeks, we might be warm and they will, they might, they will be warm by then and sometimes they won't head up. So what you want to do is see if you can buy plants. Definitely see if you can buy little color packs. I don't like to get big, but um, even like a little color pack, like this little, this little, um, bok choy i'll uh, actually let me pick another one here where did i where's let me just grab one i didn't really bring a lot of broccoli color packs up but even like this like just example of this mizuna is um, about six weeks old perfect to plant right now i, I always shred the roots uh perfect to plant right now but it just takes too long to grow them from seeds, you know. I mean, I do broccoli, I will do, but cauliflower, they're too temperamental to warmer weather. How often should you fertilize sweet peas after planting? I really don't feed them that much. I really don't. She's asking, um, they're asking if, if you, um, how much do you feed sweet peas? I really don't. A big thing that I do right now when I plant, I will top dress or mix in Malibu compost and worm castings. Um, I can put in a rose fertilizer if I want, but I don't really feed that much. I only feed them when I plant, and that's about it. And then um, somebody asked, what are water sprouts on the apple tree? Well, they're asking, what are water sprouts? Water sprouts are the branches right against the trunk. So if you have the main trunk, I couldn't find any apple trees that had them, but right against where the trunk is, you have a branch, about two to three inches from that central trunk which is your central leader you'll get these water sprouts and they're 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 basically branches that grow grow straight as an arrow they won't fruit they take a lot of energy and nutrients away from the tree so anything that's on the inside of the tree and you'll see them just going straight as an arrow you'll see them on peaches plums apricots nectarines um, not as apples you really don't see them as much but they're they're like a skinny little branch it will go straight so always cut those off and the last one when do you plant milkweed seeds well see i didn't really talk about them but when i plant milkweed from seeds i do them next month but i do them in my greenhouse so they're asking when's the time to plant milkweed seeds so the milkweed that i grow and i'm going to be growing um Slepsius fascularis and then i'm going to grow in carpa like the showy milkweed but i will start them next month in my greenhouse if you're starting outside, maybe March or so. Yeah. Okay, this is David Rizzo. Happy New Year again, and thanks for joining me today. And come in and see us too. And I forgot to go over our early season roses. But early season roses, bare roots, planting time now. We've got a good selection of them. But come in and see me, and you guys have a great day. Happy gardening.